had four authors share their literary stories and discuss their books. Well, it was such a fun show, I decided to do it again with tonight's Authors Roundtable 2. Well, two of tonight's guests have written wonderful children's books, and another has a book for adults. Well, they include my longtime friend, Miriam Maymay Ali, who is a public speaker. She's a social worker and the author of a book entitled, I Shook Up the World, The Incredible Story of Muhammad Ali, who happens to be her late great father, also known as the greatest. We also have an author by the name of Erica Archer, who's going to be with us. She's the author of a new book called Allison, You Are Beautiful, a children's book that's part of the TBN Trilogy family. And we have the author Lacey Robertson, who's right here in the studio next to me. And she's a super successful real estate um, guru who has written a book called Modify Me. So if you're in need of loan modification or expert real estate information, you definitely want to stick around and hear what Lacey has to say. And later, we can also chat with LaQuanza Dockery. She's a retired traveling nurse and an entrepreneur who has created an incredible organic line of scrubs that could revolutionize the medical industry. So needless to say, this is Ladies' Night once again here on The Cut Chronicles. And we begin with the lady who's sitting right next to me, if you're watching. Her name is Lacey Robertson. And uh, again, she's a phenomenal realtor and mortgage expert. Welcome, dear friend. Thank you for having me, Eric. Thank you for having me. Uh, Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Lacey Robertson, affectionately known as the hardest working woman in mortgage and real estate nationwide. And I've been in the business over 18 years and I just changed lives. Okay, that's good. And in a great way. In a great way. (laughs) Listen, they don't regret when they speak with me for sure. Okay. And uh, tell us why you're here. You've got something important that you want to share with the people before we even get to your book. Yes. So I'm here because um, if you haven't been living up under a rock, you've been hearing multiple, multiple companies have been laying off. They're doing massive layoffs. From the beginning of the year, Amazon laid off of over 30,000 employees. Bank of the West just laid off 248 employees two weeks ago. Um, And it can be devastating. So I'm here to let people know if you find yourself in a place where you have a loss of income, um, whether you lost your job, you're, you're experiencing a divorce or an illness, you don't have to lose the house because you have a loss of job. That's right. And of course, I've seen some of your posts, including on your, your YouTube, where you share about certain companies that are on the verge of laying people off. How did that idea come about? Well, um, many, many years ago, I was in the process of purchasing a piece of property. And um, if you ever purchase property, you know that there's no rescission period. So I had signed loan documents. And within hours of me signing, I go to work. And without warning, myself and 399 other employees were getting laid off that day. You you got the notice, you go back to your desk, and you pack up all your belongings. That was a rude awakening, wasn't it? <laughs> that was like, oh, my gosh. And I, I, I didn't think at the time. Of course, I was devastated. But what I did know is my loan was on someone's desk to fund that day. And I called my realtor. I called my mortgage broker. I was like, you cannot fund this loan. I don't have a job. <laughs> and they were like, What? You didn't know? I said, I didn't know. Fast forward some years uh, later, there's a federal legislation that requires employers, if they're laying off a percentage of their workforce in a specific location, um, they have to let uh, the federal government know and the state in which they operate know. And I figured, 
wouldn't it be nice? What would you do differently if you knew there was a slim or a chance that you would be on the chopping block? Mm -hmm. You know, would you say, you know what? I'm not going to upgrade my house. I'm not going to buy this new car. Let me sit tight. Let me consolidate my bills. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to help the people out because had I known, I would have saved on... <laughs> home inspections and and just everything that comes into purchasing a piece of property and so that's why I'm here. Well, many years ago I worked at Channel 2 here in Los Angeles CBS and I remember one of our reporters uh in one particular week it was something similar to that on Wednesday she got word that she was getting laid off on Friday mm -hmm. and she had just closed escrow on her house that week. So uh it's also important for people to um, to manage their money correctly, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're taught and we educate, at least I educate my clients, you know, it's nice whether the bank requires it or not. It's nice to have, a, you know, six months worth of mortgage payments saved up. But let's just say life happens. And you can have that saved up when you purchase the house. Doesn't mean you still have it two and three years down the line, right? And so... Um, Yes, you want to manage your uh, money correctly, but just think, devastating news when you <laughs> get called into office and your name is one of the ones. Without question. So that's why it's important that you um, take great care of your finances and not overdo and, and, and overindulge yourself financially just in case something like that happens. Um, you have written a book here called Modify Me Now. Tell us about the book and why was it important for you to, to, to write it? Well, Modify Me Now, um, back in 2006, 2009, when we had the mortgage uh, crisis, I was still, I was in the business then, and I got laid off. I told you, that was my story. My story was I got laid off with 399 employees, and I found it difficult. One thing about working in the mortgage and real estate industry, a lot of times when you get laid off, it's not like you can go down the street and get a job, because either they're laying off too, or they're not hiring. And so, while I have this experience, I'm like, I can't. I can't get a job. And lo and behold, I, you know, I was searching and then getting a job in another industry. Other industries don't like to take us mortgage professionals <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because they figure once the market gets back good again, we're out the door. Right. Yeah. So they're you like, uh -uh. Passing, passing through, huh? <laughs> so they're like, uh, no, thank you. You might have the qualities and everything, but no, thank you. So fast forward, um, I was, uh, I have to pay opening of this business to my mother because I, it was when I was talking to her, I was like, ah, what am I going to do? I need a job, you know? And she goes, what do you know all the ins and outs about? And I was like, mortgage. She goes, you probably have a job. So between that and, you know, I'm a Jesus lover, I, you know, I consulted God. And sure enough, my very first client was an older lady at my church. She stood up. In, in a testimony service and she was about to lose her home. Mm -hmm. She was sold a bad loan mm -hmm. um, and her mortgage more than doubled wow. in six months. And so she was like, what am I going to do? She thought she was going to be out on the street. And I told her after service, I says, if you don't mind, let me see if I can help you. The rest is history. She's deceased now, but she was able to live in her home until she um, expired. And um, from then, I've just been on a quest to help people save their homes if they want to keep them. And they've had um, life deal them some lemons. They know who to call. <laughs> That's right. And so your mom ins uh, inspired you to do this? She what, inspired me. Mary, Mary. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. She inspired me to go ahead and open up the business and um, help as many people as I can. And so um, here I am. And I noticed this on your website and, and on the emails that you sent me, you actually have some guarantees that <laughs> if you can't help them do certain things, yes. you will pay them money. Yes, I do. Tell us so, about that. Um, so I let people know if I 
I guarantee that you will not lose your property to foreclosure. You won't. So whether you want to save it, whether you want to sell it, um, it is my promise to you. And of course, there are requirements you got to feel like you can't just come to me and say, I need your help, but you don't provide all the necessary paperwork, right? But as long as um, you provide all the information that I ask for, I guarantee that you will not lose your house to foreclosure. And Lacey, what is it that you want to tell the people to keep themselves from getting in that predicament of, of, of being on the verge of losing their home through uh, foreclosure? Well, I like to use the acronym LOAN, right? So if you find yourself where you've experienced a loss of income, um, I use the acronym LOAN. Um, L stands for don't list your property at the same time that you want to seek a loan modification. So don't list it for sale because what you end up doing, you confuse the bank. The bank is like, do you want to keep your house or do you want to sell it? Make up your mind, right? And then O stands for omitting pages of documents. So many times you reach out to your lender and you send in documents, but they're incomplete. And that is how a lot of people get denied. If your bank statement says that it's eight pages to your bank statement, we need all eight pages. Mm -hmm. Even if it's information only, we need all eight pages. And then A stands for adding income incorrectly. So, and excluding income. So you want to make sure you add. If you're renting a room, that counts. Mm -hmm. That counts. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're adding all of your income and your expenses correctly. And then in notices, it is so, so big. You notices that you get from your bank is time sensitive. So you have to open up your mail. A lot of times when we're going through stuff, we don't want to open up the bills. We don't want to open up the notices. You're like, I don't have no money. How am I going to pay these people? But you need to open up your mail because they're time sensitive and it's not automatic. The help is not automatic, but if you do your part, it can get done. And Lacey, tell the people how they can contact you and where can they learn more information about you? Yeah, so just to contact me, it's really simple. It's modifymenow.com. That's M-O-D-I-F-Y, um, me, M-E, now, N-O-W.com. All my information is there. You can reach out. Um, we can hop on a call. Um, I do have a free document checklist there, so you can ahead of time be able to start getting all your paperwork together if you know this is something that you need, um, and you can get all the information there. Again, that's modifymenow.com, modifymenow.com, and you can connect with Lacey Robertson, our first guest here, the author of that book of the same title. And, of course, you're a realtor, you're uh, into mortgage loans, and, of course, on social media. You know, tell the people about that. Yeah, so obviously I am I help people um, avoid foreclosure, but I'm a realtor and mortgage broker. So if you need help selling a property, purchasing a property, getting financing, I'm all things mortgage and real estate. They don't call me the hardest working woman in mortgage and real estate nationwide for no reason. I promise you that. Okay, once again, her name is Lacey Robertson. That's spelled L-A-C-Y, Robertson, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. And you can find her on social media, Facebook, and others as well. Thank you for shedding light on what it is that you do. And I'm prayerful that some who are listening to this will get a chance to reach out not only to you, but to be able to, uh, be able to help themselves when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, their real estate issues. Absolutely. Okay, what we're going to do right now is we're going to move right along on the program. Our next guest is a dear sister friend of mine that I've known for, I guess, about 20 plus years. And of course, we all know and fell in love with her father. I think he is probably the most famous man in all of the world, even in death. K 
KCAA 1050 AM 106.5 FM, Loma Linda, California. We are an NBC affiliate. Again, I'm Eric J. Chambers. This is the Cut Chronicles, where we chronicle urban life. And you heard from one of my all-time favorite athletes and people, the great Muhammad Ali. I had the pleasure of interviewing him one time, and that was in San Diego back in the 80s. And I'll never forget it. And I'm so honored to have with us on the phone his oldest, eldest child. Her name is Miriam Maymay Ali. Miriam, are you there? Eric, I am. How can you hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly, friend. Good to hear your voice once again. It's been a while. Eric, you know, I just, you have supported me and been so encouraging to me for about 20 years i think i've long you about i've known you for about 21 22 years and it's just full circle you were one of the first people to interview me 20 years ago when this book originally came out that's right in fact i was thinking about that today i did a show when i was on the word network and it was um a, a show that featured you and yolanda king dr martin luther king's daughter yes. <laughs> remember that and I was like, man, who knew that I would end up having this kind of uh, these kinds of guests together? As why well. I just did a story on daughters of of famous people, and the, the two of you were there. And um, but your book, I shook up the world. Tell us about it and what inspired it. And of course, your father. I'm really pleased that he had a chance to see that before he passed away. Yes, he did. Well, you know, this is a. I received a call from the publisher, Beyond Words Publishing, and. They said, we want to re-release your book as a 20th anniversary edition. And I was like, really? Nice. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people want it. And I, I say, well, it's out of print. I don't have any more. And it was just, it's an honor that Beyond Words Publishing and Simon Schuster wanted to republish it. And now it's, I shook up the world, 20th anniversary edition. So if you happen to Google it, it's important to Google that, um, 20th anniversary edition. So this is the affordable paperback. The first release was a hardback, hardcover copy back in 2003. And you know, Eric, as his child, I've had maybe thousands of people walk up to me and tell their stories on how Muhammad Ali impacted them, um, how he encouraged them, motivated them, taught them so many men especially said he was like the uncle I never had. I felt like I knew him. And I, I heard so many stories and I, I just wanted to do something in his honor 20 years ago. Um, a lot of nice children books about him, not many back then. They've had many come out since then. Mm -hmm. But just from a daughter's perspective and how I see the essence of my father, and I kind of want to share those life lessons from his life the children and um and it's important for this kind of history not to go away you know oh, unfortunately absolutely. we're living in a weird time where they're trying to get rid of books and that's what i was about to history. say who does that who bans a book on rosa parks and muhammad ali and um roberto clemente and people like that nobody but that crazy governor down in florida so that's why it's yeah. important that we continue to tell the stories of our people and when we right. tell those stories, May May, it's not that we're trying to diminish other people. It's that we're trying no, to let you, people know that this is where we came from and there's more to come. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's that whole issue is not really us having to explain ourselves. There's a whole agenda behind that. Um, you erase someone's humanity when you erase their history. And this is nothing new. Uh, slaves could not read. It was against the law for slaves to read. Now we can't read about slavery. So, you know, I encourage not just books like mine. There's so many great African-American scholars and scholars of other cultures that we have to really educate ourselves because there's definitely a pushback on people understanding the facts. So that's that's another show, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, yeah, but like I was saying, there's just so many lessons um about his life, uh, you know, just confidence, determination, you know, the fact that my father even began to box because of something 
a bad negative experience that he had and introducing children to the idea of when your destiny is before you, mm-hmm. mis- misfortunes can turn into fortunate paths for yourself. So he only started to box because his, fa- his bike got stolen. He wow. probably would have never seen a boxing gym Isn't if he that amazing? wasn't. <laughs> right, if he wasn't motivated to beat up the kid that stole his bike, he never right. found the he never found the person who stole his bike, but he found this a wonderful career. Oh, without and the book question. Shows how? Yeah, go ahead. I say without question, and and I believe between he and Dr. King, and I would probably give the edge to Muhammad Ali as being the most famous person in history, because you can there is no place you can't go in the world, no place you can go in the world, I should say, where people won't identify who Muhammad Ali was. And I love the fact that he was such, I mean, he was just such a people person all over the world. They gravitated Uh toward him. And he was a man who loved people. And what I really appreciate about him, Maymay, is the fact that he stood up for us. He stood up for us when it was not um, a popular thing to do, you know, with him not going to war and and spending time in jail for the betterment of his people. So if right. nothing else, man, I appreciate him for that. Yeah. Yeah, he always taught us that he knew that people or VIPs or other celebrities or politicians, he knew that at the end of the day, he was used as an exceptional black person. And people who loved him may may not have loved his brother. And he was very clear on that. So he never disassociated himself from the everyday man or the person who was not a celebrity. That was very important. And um, he let people know that all the time. So he saw how people of color were treated, then he saw how he would be treated on a day-to-day basis, and there were two different experiences. So he was very, um, he acknowledged the hypocrisy in that. I I was a junior in high school, and I remember my math teacher saying, your dad's the most famous person in the world. I don't know if he has that ranking now. I know he's one of the most famous men. But I they would actually still did say a, yes. a real statistical ranking, and it was in the 80s. And he just, you know, for him, that's just a blessing from God. And he just tried to use that celebrity in, in a impactful, positive way. You know, that's he, it was just his celebrity was a means to an end to be, um, to help folks. And, and to, to and make change and, and to say something different that Absolutely. most celebrities wouldn't say. So that's why I wrote the book, you know, just, and I, I'm, I'm so grateful that they decided to republish it. There's a timeline at the end of the book that teachers love. Kids can use the book for a book report. He does the opening of the book. And for those super Muhammad Ali fans, these are for the super, super fans who mm-hmm. love memorabilia, there's actually, 20 years ago, they did a um, leather-bound collector's um, book. It's leather. It's a children's book, but it's covered in, black, covered in black leather and gold font. And he signed all of them. And they, had, they may have about 50 left. So if you wow. really want, if you want this book in leather signed by my dad 20 years ago, contact Beyond Words Publishing. Um, but for right now, the book is on pre-order um, at at Beyond Words Publishing, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Books a Million, and Bookshop. And the official re- release date is January twenty third, twenty twenty four. They they're only printing limited copies, so if you want to get it, you have to get it on. You know, it's good to pre-order it now, and make sure to put in I shook up the world twentieth anniversary edition. Is there going to be a difference between the original and the 20th? Yeah, the original is a hardcover that was $16.99. The, the, the new one is a paperback, a much affordable book at $10.99. So the books are the same, but the timeline, the timeline is updated because my father was still living in 20, uh, 2003, 2003. So the timeline of his life in the back that has things that the book doesn't have, like he freed hostages, you know, overseas. And there are other things that he did in his life that kids could use for book reports. So I updated that uh, timeline, but it's a paperback version of the hardcover. Okay, wonderful. 
For those yeah. of you just joining us, I'm Eric J. Chambers. This is the Cut Chronicles, where we chronicle urban life here on KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. We're speaking with my dear longtime friend, Miriam Meme Ali. She's the daughter of the late, great Muhammad Ali. And speaking of your dad, tell us what kind of a person was he? What was it like growing up a daughter of Muhammad Ali? Mm, uh, I tell people I don't know what it's not like. It's, okay, you know what I'm true. saying? I've had a, um, that's fair. <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say on, on the side of just the experience, we were always surrounded by a lot of people all the time because he was a pie piper of people. He, there, were, there were people everywhere all the time. So that was interesting. I think that experience made me, gave me pretty good discernment on people's character. Because when you grow up watching people and mannerisms, and especially people that you see over your lifetime, you, you begin to, you know, you begin to understand character a little bit better. So I can see kind of who's coming and what they're about, like being in the room with them for about 15 minutes. So I think that came from being around so many people as a, so many people as a child. In terms of his personality, my father, you know, what you what you saw, you know, on on the news, on TV shows, is who he was. He didn't really like all people had he had many sides, but he was very funny. He was a practical joker around the house. Um, he was a father who really tried to translate his worldly experience for his young kids so we could he could teach us, you know, really impactful lessons to help guide us. And he wanted to teach us young, you know, like uh, he has a lot of daughters and only one son. So he wanted to teach us about men and relationships. And he started fairly young with us because he didn't want us to learn these things from school. He wanted his, he wanted a father to teach his daughters about things, not, not learn it for the first time in school. And it really, it really affected me in a positive way kind of understanding things. So when I heard things that might impact me in a negative way, I could say, you know, my father already talked to me about that. You know what I'm saying? So, I, so the, he was just, you know, a really cool person, just a fun person. And as busy as he was, it's amazing. For many years I didn't live with him, I had so many wonderful memories because of the quality time that he gave us. Fantastic. Even though he traveled around the world and had to train all the time, he made sure those moments were were quality and memorable. So, well, that's awesome. I, you know, I, yeah, I have friends. I have you know friends with children that might have relationship problems with their what you know their exes. And I say, even if you live in a different state, do do everything you can do to spend time with your children because. It's not. It's not the quantity. It really isn't. It's the quality. Absolutely, and I wouldn't know how to act if I lived in a different place or with my daughter. Um, mm -hmm. I someone was asking me when I was in Mississippi last week, would you ever move back home to Louisiana or Mississippi? I was like, well, not as long as I have a daughter. I have to be right there with my baby girl. She's right. uh, Erica's at USC. Last time you saw her at my Christmas, remember I had to have the birthday party at my place back in '05. And you yeah. and Panther came to it, and um, but uh, man, so many years have gone by, and I was just shocked yes. to see that it's been 20 years 20 since years. I shook up the yes. world came out. May May, just quickly tell us where the book is available one more time before we go to our break. Again, if you want to go online, you want to put in "I shook up the world" 20th anniversary edition. You can get it at Beyond Words Publishing, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Books a Million and Bookshop. And thank you everyone in advance who wants to support this book. It's a it's been a favorite for a long time. It's, teachers love it, students love it. The the reviews are great on Amazon and it's it's really an inspirational, motivational story for kids. Also within the book I didn't talk about and this is what another thing that inspired me initially to write it was his funny poetry that he said throughout his career. I have some of those poems animated, and they're very humorous. And kids, they're like tall tales for children. Okay. And those, some of those poems are animated, and they're just funny. Kids crack up over them. So I hope you enjoy it. 
And uh, thank you so much again, Eric, for always supporting me. Okay, my friend. It's a pleasure having you on the show. And before yes. the book comes out in January, let's do it again, okay? Sure, most definitely, most definitely. Okay, once again, family, that's Miriam Meme Ali, the oldest daughter of the greatest Muhammad Ali. It's time for us to take another uh, first break, I should say. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to an author of another children's book. It's called Allison, You Are Beautiful. Her name is Erica Archer, and she's standing by. Back in a moment. We interrupt this program to bring you this special report. The 2 p.m. show of God's trying to tell you something is sold out. That's the bad news, but the good news is they're adding one final performance. Saturday, September 30th at 7 p.m. Victoria Gardens Cultural Center, Lewis Family Playhouse. Come and see what everybody's talking about. Tickets on sale now at the box office and God's trying to tell you something.com. It's God's trying to tell you something. But hurry before they sell out again. At McKay's Mortuaries, we're not there just for the end of life of a loved one, but for the living. To show our appreciation to the community, we sponsored a trip to the African American Film Institute in Los Angeles to see an exhibit of black actors from 1922 until now. And we took senior citizens to Pala Casino for a day of fun. We want to be there in good times, not just in sorrow. When that time comes, remember our name, McKay's Mortuaries. For locations, visit McKay'sMortuaries.com. My early Alzheimer's diagnosis was hard to take. But it gave my mom and me more time to plan together. Talk to your family about seeing a doctor. Go to alz.org slash time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Darlings, it's your girl Vilica A. Fox here, and you are tuned in to the Cut Chronicles. Enjoy. KCAA 1050 AM 106.5 FM. We are an NBC affiliate here in Southern California. I'm Eric J. Thank you so much for tuning into the program here at the Cut Chronicles again. Um, it was a delight having Meme Ali on, and if she was calling us from Chicago. I didn't know that my friend had moved until we were setting this up over the weekend. So that's where she is. And of course, Lacey is here. And now for those of you who are watching us online, we have another person who's joined us in the studio, who's driven all the way from Northridge to be on the show, Erica Archer. She is the author of a phenomenal children's book herself. It's called Allison, You Are Beautiful. Welcome, Erica. Thank you so much, Eric, for having me. It's my pleasure having you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? All right. So I am originally from Chesapeake, Virginia. I have not lived in Chesapeake, Virginia, probably in um, about 18 years. Um, I am an Air Force veteran, and um, I also am a finance manager and a researcher, and now I'm adding author to my resume. <laughs> That's right. I understand you work with the uh, the VA, mm -hmm. and you are a veteran just like myself. You're Air Force. I'm a Navy guy. Yes, yes. So uh, <laughs> we both serve this country well. Mm -hmm. And tell us about your book and what inspired you to write Allison, You're Beautiful. All right. Allison, You're you're Beautiful is about a happy girl, and um, she is just going through life. Um, she's not really focused on anything, and then one day while she's at school, uh, she starts getting picked on for the way that she looks, and she has freckles on her face, and her... Um, and one of the classmates started asking, hey, why do you have those freckles on your face? What are those things on your face? And so then she's like, these are a part of me. These... It's, it's nothing it's nothing wrong with what I have on my face and then they started saying that she like a giraffe and that she looks the spots look like dirt and next thing you know she starts uh, really taking all of that in and she starts developing low self-esteem and her mother um, is there to really affirm back to her that she's beautiful just the way that she is that the spots on her face the freckles on our face on her face really makes her uh, 
even more gorgeous. And um, it has a lot of positive affirmations for kids who may be struggling with low self-esteem, who may be struggling with bullying or teasing, or um, even suicide or uh, depression or any of those things. These, this book is a really good tool to help parents and teachers navigate the topic of self-esteem and loving yourself. And did this... Was this inspired by something you went through yourself as a child? Yes, it did. Tell Uh us a little bit about that. Uh, So I will say um, probably back in elementary, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I definitely did get teased. (laughs) But, um, you know... And when I was getting teased, I would go to my parents and be like, hey, you know, uh, you know, I'm getting teased. This is hurting my feelings. And uh, my parents, they old school. OK, <laughs> so they were like, well, you know, just ignore it. Just ignore it. And I'm like, I can't really ignore it because my self-esteem is starting to diminish. And um, the reason why I really wrote the book. Um, It's because I understand when we have low self-esteem, a lot of times we can choose things at the level of where our self-esteem is at, and it can really really, um, change the trajectory of our lives if we continue to operate in the low self-esteem. We can choose uh, bad friendships, bad relationships, uh, bad job opportunities, or low job opportunities opportunities because we don't feel like we're worthy of good things. So I really wanted to tackle and um, really get to kids early. So that way they know um, that you know that you're beautiful just the way you are and that their parents will also know how to pour into them so that way they can have high self-esteem and look at themselves with high regards as well. And Erica, what has the response been so far from the people who have been buying? And of course, you've had uh, signings over at yes. Barnes and Noble at the Grove here in LA yes. and other places and in Norfolk, Virginia, where I'm from as well. Okay. Uh, the response has been amazing. I really am just grateful to God um, for everything. Uh, I have been getting so many um, responses from people really all over the world because I know a lot of people all over the world, especially due to my military service as well. Um, but I've had so many people that were just inspired and their kids really loved the book. And um, one story that really touched me, I had a young girl who was actually um, battling cancer and she was about five years old. Um, and her hair fell out and when she was reading the book she was able to identify with my character and you know she didn't really feel beautiful in the state when her hair was falling out and then um her mother was affirming to her that she's just as beautiful and that you know this too is gonna pass you're still beautiful so she was really able to identify with my character speaking of the character Mm -hmm. allison where did you get the name from you know what it was something that i did pray about a lot of people think that i you know came up with the name like I know someone by the name of Allison and I can't really say that I know anyone by the name of Allison, but I definitely did pray about it. And this was the name that um, God gave me. And it has been so many people who love the name because they either know people in their family by the name of Allison or um, I had two people that reached out to me where they had two siblings who um, passed on and um, they were just like oh I gotta get the book now because that was my sibling's name or their middle name or something of that nature so I'm just I'm happy that it really did some kind of bring some comfort to some people as well. So have you met any children with the name Allison since no, you No, not the yet. Book? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Especially um, who's going through the bullying and yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah, not yet. I have not um, met any children by the name of Allison, um, but I have met some amazing children. And... Um, it has just been a blessing just to see the response. And also, um, a lot of times, a lot of people will want me to write something special in their book for their child. So I will pray about what to write because I want to be able to really talk to their heart, whatever it is that they may be going through or, uh, you know, whatever encouraging word I can give. And I will write a great message. And a lot of times the parents will be like, that was just spot on. I'm so happy that you did it. And I love the books. I love the um you know, the imagery and the words and everything. And of course, who's your illustrator? Oh, my illustrator, her name is Delena Robbins. She is amazing. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. And I did actually, when writing this book, um, I started back in 2016, actually. I was on my last deployment in the Air Force and I would wake up 
every right. Saturday around 1 a.m. to write the book. Me and God, we wrote the book mm -hmm. <laughs> together. And um, I did go through, I would say, about two other illustrators, but they just did not catch my vision for it. I can't draw, so I mean, you know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can't draw. I can write, but I can't draw. So you were you needed someone <laughs> who could articulate what you were trying to yes. see with the visuals. And, yes. of course, you are part of the TBN trilogy. Tell yes. us about that. So um, I got with TBN, I would say, at the beginning of the year, and um, we went through the process. They loved the book. Um, I sent them my manuscript. Uh, they loved the book, and um, then they were like, okay, let's go. Let's do it. And um, with their distribution, I am everywhere with the book. I am in Bars and Nobles, and I, like you stated, I was. Um, I did a book signing uh, a on September 2nd, and I do have about 10 uh, physical copies in the store where anyone can either go directly to the store and purchase a copy, or they can call the store and say, hey, they want a signed copy of Alice and You're Beautiful, and it will ship worldwide. Uh, the book is also on um, all major online um platforms like your walmart.com, uh, your amazon.com, uh, Target, uh, Books a Million, Barnes and Nobles, you name it. You can look at Alice and You're Beautiful by Erica Archer. You will find it. It's everywhere. <laughs> and Erica, what's your website? Oh, so my website, I don't have it up just yet, but um, I really have been directing everyone to my um, to the pages because I want uh, the numbers to count because when it comes from my website, it, it won't count against you know the um, New York Times bestsellers or any of those na natures. Okay. Well, before we go to our next break here, mm -hmm. quick, quickly, I want to ask you and uh, Lacey, yes. your advice for someone who's listening right now and they're aspiring to write. Mm -hmm. I'm on my seventh book right now, yeah. but they're <laughs> aspiring to write. What would you tell them? Ooh, okay. So I would tell them to not give up. Um, it definitely was a process for me, as you, as I stated, it was 2016, and I actually went through um, another publisher that didn't do right by me, um, and a lot of obstacles that happened that will that can really allow. Um, you know, doubt to creep in and you're thinking, maybe I shouldn't be writing this or, you know, or no one wants to hear what I'm going to say. Um, but you have to keep pushing because your message, whatever God has given you in your in your heart uh, to, bur to birth out into this world, you got to push through and you have to deliver the message that he has for you. So I would just say, don't quit. Keep going. Lacey? Yes, I would say... Um, we're all an answer prayer to somebody. Mm -hmm. And if you think about what you look up on, on the internet, you're looking for information. And so who is dying? Who is lacking? Who's not moving forward? Because you refuse to say yes and surrender your will to God's will mm -hmm. and go ahead and write the book. And so I did my book in a weekend. I, I wrote my book in less than 48 hours. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, and I knew I had to get it out. People were losing their homes. Mm. And if I could change that, it wasn't an if. I know I could. Mm. And so it was important. One of my favorite authors, John Mason, says, there are people whose lives are waiting to be affected by what God has placed within you. Yes. Again, there are people whose lives are waiting to be affected by what God has placed in all of us. Mm -hmm. And so those of you who are aspiring authors or you're an aspiring musician, or whatever it is that you aspire to do, now is the time while the blood is running warm. Yes. What I'm going to do, instead of going to the break, what I'm going to do right now is bring on our, our final guest tonight, uh, and then we'll go to the break. Her name is LaQuanza Dockery. She's an accomplished travel nurse. She has a master's degree in leadership and management, and also the founder of a new company that, only, um, that has put together uh, created some what they call scrubs, you know, the scrubs that you see people wearing in the hospitals and other medical facilities, and they're organic hemp fabric, and they are the strongest natural fiber in the world, and of course, she's going to tell us about that. So, LaQuanza, are you there with us? Hi, yes, Dr. Chambers, I'm here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you on board. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and where are you calling us from? I'm calling from uh, Northern California, San Leandro. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been a travel nurse uh, for now about nine, nine and a half years. Um, most of my entire career has been traveling. I made my way from Arkansas, originally from Arkansas, 
well, all right, bypassing. Southern girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so traveling brought me out here to California, and so I actually I'm also a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, AKA. and I'm actually active. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm actually an active member of Eta Rho Omega Chapter in San Jose. So I've been just out here, you know, living and enjoying California, the food, the people, the environment. Oh, my gosh, this is by far the best place I have ever been. I've always said, once I get out here, I'm not leaving. So, yeah, I've been enjoying my my time. And so what led me to create my my scrub line is uh, through the pandemic. It was a very tough time. Um, We ran out of, like, PPE, our personal protective equipment, the way we cover ourselves entering and uh, exiting a patient's room, I found that that was a very, uh, uh, you know, difficult problem to have during the situation that we were in. So it gave me the idea of making our hospital scrubs as something that can be used as our personal uh, protective equipment in the event, of course, if we didn't have any. So I included uh, hemp, organic hemp, which is an all-natural antimicrobial so what that means is any type of anti, any fungus, virus, bacteria, anything that touches the fabric, it is destroyed on contact, with, which I thought was an absolutely awesome idea. Also, uh, a lot of scrubs out here are you know, spraying their, their fabric with, um, you know, a spray antimicrobial, which eventually washes off in the wash. But with the organic hemp, which I thought is, a, a, an amazing idea it never washes out so it's there um it's there in, in the fabric forever it's permanent it also is anti-mold it provides uv ray protection it's sustainable so anything that it takes from the soil once it's harvested the hemp returns all its nutrients back to the soil so it's more on the eco-friendly uh, side of 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 the of Well, well, that's remarkable, Laquanza, simply because I, you know, you see people all the time who work in the healthcare industry out in the public with their scrubs on. When I was in the Navy, once upon a time, we couldn't even wear our dungarees off of, you know, the jeans dungarees. We couldn't wear them off base. And I sometimes wonder when I see people wearing scrubs, whether going to work or from work, what kind of bacteria they are either bringing home or bringing to the job. And I think that's remarkable that you've been able to identify a problem and create a solution. Uh, Yes, thank you so much. I thought that that was pretty cool as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and so how is is it on the market yet, or you're you're still in your beta testing with it, or where are you with it right now? Yes, I've launched launched, uh, about early uh, April, I'm currently online. It's uh, the the website is skinrn.com. That's s k y n r n dot com. So yes, we are open and ready to accept orders. Have you gotten any like big time orders from hospitals? And and I mean, they should be the first ones that are dialing you up. Not quite. However, I have my publicist working on that, and we have um, we have some some things in the works. So we're hoping pretty soon to be on some shelves and stores and then also, you know, getting some vendors with different hospitals, things like that. So we're, we're definitely working on that. And so that's in the making right now. And I understand you got tired of having to change your, out of your scrubs every time you got home to hug somebody. And um, so now you, again, you identified a problem and you created a solution to it. And I'm really hopeful that hospitals all over the world will pick this up. You know, it's uh, sometimes, unfortunately, when it's uh, black people who are the inventors of stuff, they're slow to do it. But I'm prayerful that they will look beyond that and they will see the benefits of you being able to uh, help out these healthcare workers so that not only, again, that they bring something home to their family, but also bring something home to the hospital where the patients are already sick. Oh, that means so much to me thank you so much dr chambers like that that i am so grateful i am hoping the same thing as well and oh god that that meant so much to me i really appreciate you you saying that that that's really awesome thank you so much 
Well, absolutely. So um, you keep us posted because, sister, you're about to blow up. You're about to become a maybe even a billionaire with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping so. That would be so dope. I'm that, hoping so. That would, and That's thank fun. you to my sister friend Jackie, one of your publicists, who um, and you know who who contacted me about having you on the show. I'm so glad we have you on. Because, again, this is the kind of stuff that people need to know about. And for those in the medical industry right here, and if you would like to, um, you know, get this outfit for uh, to protect your own loved ones, it's a great idea. Believe it or not, I have a pair of scrubs. When I was a 17-year-old, I was a DJ that went by the name of Dr. Jaminstein, Archbishop of Funk. And this was <laughs> when I was living in Louisiana. And so I wore my scrubs then. And ironically, this is when I was 17, mm -hmm. and still at 60, I can still fit those same scrubs. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. That's yeah. In fact, I was <laughs> at, um, when Tyler Perry did his boo, uh, um, his boo, a Medea Halloween a few years ago with Liza Koshy in it and various others, they told those of us in the media to come dressed in Halloween attire. So I came in my scrubs and guess what <laughs> as i came in my scrubs uh tyler saw me f in the back and he, he thought i was a doctor had just come from work i said no <laughs> they told us to um come in our you know our halloween attire and ironically again it's it fits me tighter now because i've filled out i'm no longer 135 pounds and <laughs> um but i even have pictures of me when i was in the navy on the ship wearing those very scrubs so um I may have to get me a pair of those scrubs also from you so that... Um, Ooh, I was just going to say, you have to send me your info. I will definitely mail you a pair. They are extremely comfortable. And then I also have a pair of, for, for the males that don't actually... Look, they look like you could wear them out, you know, kind of in the public. And they will be so comfortable. You can wear them anywhere and look so nice. And they're so... They're absolutely, you have to send me your info. I'm going to send you a pair. You pick the size, color, and everything that you want, and I'll send them right over. Okay, well, that's very nice of you. I didn't say that to, to, to get a free pair, but that's very nice oh, of no. you to <laughs> even offer them. But nevertheless, like I said, it reminded me of uh, those days back in the day when I was Dr. Jaminstein, Archbishop <laughs> of Funk. Oh, so thank you so much, uh, LaQuanza, for being a part of the program. We're going to take one more quick break, and then we're going to come back with our final thoughts. We'll be in touch with you, okay? Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Again, her name is LaQuanza Dockery. The website is skynrn.com. Skin RN. So let's get this last spot in, and then we'll be back. When this veteran's life and you want to plan a service with dignity, respect, and comfort, there is one funeral service provider that stands tall, McKay's Mortuaries. We offer affordable, quality, bilingual, and multicultural services that will make your grieving transition smoother. Call 888-860-3125 to set up an appointment or visit mckaysmortuaries.com. When that time comes, remember our name, McKay's Mortuaries. We interrupt this program to bring you this special report. The 2 p.m. show of God's Trying to Tell You Something is sold out. That's the bad news, but the good news is they're adding one final performance. Saturday, September 30th at 7 p.m. Victoria Gardens Cultural Center, Lewis Family Playhouse. Come and see what everybody's talking about. Tickets on sale now at the box office and God's Trying to Tell You Something.com. It's God's Trying to Tell You Something. But hurry before they sell out again. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. Who, me? Text and whatever. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Monday evening. Thank you so much for tuning into the program. For my guests, Erica Archer and Lacey Robertson. And my dear sister friend, May May Ali, who called in from Chicago, and Laquanza Dockery out of the Bay Area. Thank you so much. In the meantime, be sure to tune in to The Jasper with Eric Chase, Saturdays at 5 p.m. right here on KCAA Radio, 1050 a.m., 106.5 FM. Until we meet again, God bless you, God bless me, God bless us all. Miss your favorite show? Download the podcast at kcaaradio.com.